Alright, today we're going to be looking at how um, electrons are arranged in the atom. And I want you to keep in mind that there's um, a lot of math and probability that went into finding these different locations and orbitals that we're going to talk about. And we're not going to necessarily go into all the theory behind how that was discovered. Um, that would definitely be something for maybe like an AP chemistry uh, or college chemistry, but for regular chemistry we're going to, uh, we're not going to be going into that depth, okay? So we're going to just take a look uh, today about how things are arranged. So first of all we're going to look at levels and uh, we'll use the letter N to represent the levels that electrons can be in, like energy levels. And then we're going to look at these sublevels and then lastly we're going to look at the different orbitals that exist for the different sublevels. So if we, took a look, if we take a look at energy levels, uh, we are going to use seven different energy levels and we number them from one through seven and that tells us how far away from the nucleus the electron is located. The first energy level would be one, it's the closest, the seventh energy level being the furthest one away from the nucleus. And again, we said we're going to use the letter N to represent these. So when you see N equals 1 or N equals 4, they're referring to uh, which energy level the electron is in. Again, 1 is closest, 7 is furthest away. There can be more than one electron in this same energy level. Uh, for instance, the first energy level can hold two electrons. And so if they're in the same energy level, then um, we would say that they would have the same value. Um, and they're also going to be in the same shell, all right? So the same energy level. Get out your periodic table if you haven't already, and your energy levels um, go in order from the periodic table. So the first energy level would be hydrogen, and then across from that, um, helium. So hydrogen and helium here are in energy level one. We have energy level two. That would be lithium and beryllium, but also we have all the way across, um, boron through neon. You have energy level three and four, and you would want to continue labeling energy level five and six and seven. So there's only seven energy levels, and we'll talk about the two that are kind of pulled out and put down at the bottom, numbers 57 to 70 and 89 to 102. We'll talk about those in class. Those are actually part of levels six and seven. So then let's look at the sublevels. Okay, within each one of those energy levels, we have what we call these sublevels. And that is uh, the shape of our orbital, is what the sublevel is. So when we are in the first energy level, the first energy level only has one sublevel in it, and it's called an S. And the next several slides will take a look at what those um, shapes uh, or are. In the second energy level, we also have S, but we also are going to be adding another sublevel, and that's called the P sublevel. The third energy level has three sublevels, and the fourth energy level has four. And as far as what we will be doing in class, that's as far as we will go. But the fifth energy level would hold um, uh, five sublevels, the sixth would hold six sublevels, and so on. Then let's look at orbitals. So we had levels, which were our energy levels, and then we had sublevels, and then our orbitals are going to refer to our shape. Okay? So the orbitals indicate where we are around the nucleus. So the nucleus is kind of this middle point right here where your three lines are connecting. And <coughs> excuse me, your S orbital is spherical, so it uh, goes around that nucleus in a sphere shape and there's really only one orientation that we can have. The sphere sits on the X, the Y, and the Z axis kind of equally. So there's only one orientation that we can have for that. So notice here we just have one S uh, since there's only one orientation. Whereas if we take a look at our P orbital, our P orbital is a dumbbell shape. So with that dumbbell shape, we can have the dumbbell sitting on the x-axis or the y-axis, or we could have it also sitting on the z-axis. Because there are three different orientations or ways that the dumbbell could be placed, the p sublevel has 
um, three different orientations for it. So sometimes you'll see uh, 2P written three times because there are three different ways that the P orbital could be arranged. And again, we're going to practice with this. This is just kind of introducing this so that we can begin practicing. Uh, if we were to combine the S and the P um, orbitals together, notice that here's our spherical shape for our S. And then the P orbitals, if we were to kind of overlap them all, we could have our, our Y axis, our X axis, and our Z axis. Remember, these are just places to find an electron. So the electron could be anywhere within maybe the Z, could be anywhere within the Y. These are just areas where electrons might be located. Uh, when we got to the third energy level, we introduced the D orbital. And so the D orbital is uh, there are five different orientations or shapes for the D orbital. Um, most of them look kind of like the four-leaf clover, either on the X, the Y, between the X and the Y, um, or we can have it, um, sorry, we have the, yes, okay, you can see the four different shapes that we have here, orientations as far as which way is it facing. Um, and our last one here, we kind of have the dumbbell shape again with this donut around it. You don't need to know all the shapes. They're not going to be asked on the test. But I just wanted to show you the pictures because there are five different orientations, uh, excuse me, of how the D orbital can be arranged. And then lastly, we have the F orbital. And that's as high as we will be talking in class. But the F orbital has seven different arrangements. And so here would be uh, what those would look like the seven different ways that the F orbital can be arranged. This one, by the way, has the most energy. So the S is the lowest, P is a little higher. D and then F, as far as energy of these electrons, would be um, if we're concerned about the energy. And we're almost finished, but I wanted to kind of sum up everything. So in the first energy level, we have just the S sublevel. Again, the S sublevel only has the one orientation. And each orbital can hold two electrons. So because there's only one shape here, we have just the two electrons. When we get to the second energy level, we have two sublevels, the S and the P. Again, the S only has the one orientation. But there were three different uh, P orbitals, the X, Y, and Z axis. Each orbital can hold two electrons. So this one can hold two electrons. This one can hold two two each, so two, four, six, eight. That's where that eight electrons are coming from here. That's total in the second energy level. The third energy level, you have S, P, and D. So we have our S, the three P orbitals, and then the five D orbitals. So if we were to take and add the two electrons in each one of these, we would get 18. And then again, for the fourth energy level, we're adding all of the seven F shapes. Um, so we up our number of electrons. Your periodic table is also arranged by these orbitals. So you're going to notice these first two columns here are all of your S orbitals. So if you have an electron, or um, let's say sodium, for instance, is sitting right here, we know that sodium is in the third energy level, and it's actually um, in an S orbital. So you can find a certain element and find out what orbital it's in. We have the P block of elements over here. All of the D orbital elements sit right here in the middle. And your F orbital sits, these are the uh, lanthanide and actinide ones down here at the bottom. Uh, so those are your, that we will talk a lot about this periodic table and how this is arranged. We have a lot of practicing to do. But again, this is just kind of introducing um, different shapes that our um, electrons could potentially be in.